Hi everybody, long time no see, Ivan is here and uh, finally I figured out that it's much better to keep microphone like here, not in a horizontal line. And in today's video I'm going to tell you about my recent changes in Neovim configuration. And I see that you are waiting for some kind of videos about the Neovim and uh, I prepared one and I want to show you how I'm using Neovim currently and uh, how I'm not using it. And one thing more, in a couple of previous videos I've been using a script because I decided that I want to have the perfect videos. But uh, recently I discovered that if I'm recording, uh, if I'm reading something from the screen and I'm preparing the script, uh, I, I can't express myself and you don't know my real emotions. I'm just reading uh, the, the, the text and it's a uh, pretty good text because uh, I, I prepared that and I fixed all errors but in my free speech of course you will see the mistakes and probably you'll encounter it with some mispronunciation of some words but I want to express myself and I decided that this much better way and I'm going to continue with this so and and of course in the previous videos I used some software from Nvidia when you can track my eyes looking directly in the camera not in in a, not not to not to the screen but I removed that now you see my real moving eyes so if I'm looking in the corner of my screen you will see that if I have some notes there you will see that but I decided it's fine I want to be natural and I want to express myself then let's continue so let's back to Neovim. I discovered that I spent too much time configuring and tweaking my, my Lua configuration, updating some plugins and some of them after the update they're broken and I need to fix update the configs and I decided um, that it's not the best way because all of this configuration is pretty much tedious and I want to spend my time developing something that I want, investing my time in learning not how to configure Neovim in the best way possible but how to write the software, how to doing my projects and etc. And I think it's most important for you. Don't spend too much time on on your on your environment. And I know some people they are obsessed with that. They're obsessed how they set up they their table how they set up everything but i think it's it's not it's important of course but it's not the major thing the major thing it's what are you doing and how you invest your time and i decided i want to invest my time more in rust in programming and uh, learning and coding and etc in many more other things but not in in the configuration so and i found a really nice configuration the astron vim the guys they're very smart they know they they, they know how to configure Neovim and they did it and they prepared all of the required plugins to me N not all of them not all of them but uh, but the basic ones that you really need to start using the Neovim and all of them there so you can download it and start using it pretty quickly and I'm going to show you how to do that let's see here we go everything starts with the website and you need to open astronvim.com this is their landing page you can scroll a bit and see all of their benefits that they configured in their in their configuration for neovim but i'm also interested in get started and here you see the many configuration many many documentation but i'm most interested in uh, installation here you see Linux, Mac, Windows, or even Docker. All of them almost the same, but the directories are different. But what you need to do, you need just download, not the download, but clone from the GitHub their configuration in your NeoVim configuration directory. And they are specific for some operation system because it differs on Windows, but it's the same on Linux and Mac. And you need to clone your you need to clone the Astron Vim in this directory and for for update you need just pull any changes from the main branch that's how simple it is and in my case let's see the directory for windows directory is follows i can 
do this. I already cloned this repository and updated a couple of things. That's why I already have them here. But for the using it, if you have the new Vim installed, run it and everything is here. Then create a new file and it's a new Vim. But there is a problem. You see this, this icons, they are not uh, rendered properly. That's why I have the wrong fonts for this default uh, Windows PowerShell. And uh, for that reason, you need to download the Nerd fonts. Here go. The Nerd fonts, there's a special fonts with all of these uh, icons that you need to see here because they are broadly used in any type of software applications and uh, different developers programs and and so on but uh, they're used in, uh, in astronym so here you can see them how many of them fonts download scroll choose what you like you can even check the preview for example if you don't know how they look like you can see the the, the sample code and see ah, it's not very readable maybe this one hmm it's a bit better or this one you can compare and then download and install them in your system but in my case i already did it but i'm not using default terminal for working with Neovim. I have a special one and probably already heard of about uh, GUI, GUI applications for your Neovim. And I'm using the Neo White because it looks awesome and I like how the cursor jumps. You see, the cursor really nicely jumps. So, space in, I created some new file, it's a new file, and you can see I can, for example, jump on fourth, jump on third, or here, and I can close. That's how simple it is. It works. And there is a plenty of them. You can download the different GUI, for example, now, for example, NVIM Qt. And there is a Qt version of NeoVim. And it looks like this. Oops. So. It's NeoVim, but in a different GUI. And I tested all of them, and I prefer to use NeoWhite because I really like how the cursor jumps, and I really like uh, how the characters go. And in NeoWhite, the characters, uh, the the carrier smoothly moving. That looks just awesome. It's uh, pleasing. It pleases my eyes. Okay, and I'm going to show you how customize your NeoVim, sorry, your AstroVim to look unique and uh, personalized. So, um, let's open our terminal back and uh, let's open this folder and I will copy this. And also here, yes, yes, here, you will see the all characters, uh, game maps, case strokes, I'm pressing, pressing down. So, NeoVite, now white now white open this folder here we go this is our now white configuration folder open lua and we have one hidden file no problem at all and here we have a user and i created this folder and uh, what is the most important i don't need one more i created this file i created this file open this file uh, some random now tree error happens probably that happens because of the some paths on windows looks uh different than an other operation system especially because of this you know this uh, c dot dot uh, sign especially that happens with the path and probably it parsed wrong but uh yeah it, it's not a big problem let's scroll down and now you see that my uh, personalized configuration you can configured by your own and it's not touching Astron Vim at all. It's prepared to run inside of the Astron Vim configuration toolset. So first of all you have a color scheme and I discovered the Kanagawa Wave. Oh my god that works really good. I like this uh, I like the colors. Uh, 
Then we have a variable config. Inside of this variable, we have the color scheme. You have to set this color scheme. And then we have the LSP. Uh, LSP variable and inside of this LSP you configure your stoop handlers and in my in my case this rust analyzer because I'm using rust and here I installed the rust tools setup scroll down and the next one it's plugins and uh, because I'm running this inside of um, inside of uh, astronym I can use space Yes, okay, I can't show the structure yet, something wrong, probably something wrong with the with the Lua. I will show you the different project later with the proper LSP analyzer. So don't look at that now, it's just a configuration. So we have a plugin and inside of the plugin we have a couple of themes. I have to clean it up a bit because I am not using the Nordic or I'm not using the Groovebox. I have uh, some, uh, some icons, I have my main theme and I have more icons, I need to remove them. Uh, yes, but uh, you can install your plugins inside of this uh, variable. And here I have REST tools, scroll down, what is most important, hope. Uh, I think you know what is a hope means if you watched my previous videos, but here I configured hope, so I can press uh, F, then D, and it works really nice. And I configured this on the F and uh, uh, capital F, I have uh, any character back, so I can move here, or... I need to change it, by the way, I don't know why I configured it uh, in like, like this. I'm mostly using uh, this tool, because I'm moving all the time here. And uh, I'm moving uh, up here... Yeah, so it's the most important for me, the top 9, because I'm using this AI-generated things, but uh, I think this configuration is outdated, and I need to change it, but... Uh, what is the most important part of this config? It's a Polish, uh, the last one, and it does exactly what it says in the name. Polishing your configuration. Here I use the hope icon and the hope setup, and I have some uh, mappings for the toggle term. Because if you open the toggle term, it's really convenient to have this terminal on top. And here you can use, uh, for example, Java version. It's 11, pretty old. But uh, how I can close it? I can close it. I'm my, 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 my hands and my fingers on the keyboard. I can close it. If I press escape, it doesn't work. No escape. No, nothing changed. But I mapped the special uh key binding for the uh, terminal mode and i press ctrl t and it's gone you see the ctrl t and i said that in the normal mode i want to press ctrl t one more time and i see my terminal and it's normal mode now i can move around but then i need to press i and now i can type one more time and now you can see that it works then ctrl t it works let's show me the real project and sh and I will show you how it works. And here we go, the huge Rust project. And first of all, what we can do, we can open any file or we can check the git status. And for the git status, uh, and now you see I changed two files. On the right side, you can see what is changed. Okay, okay, let's open some of these files, for example, this one. And on the bottom, you see that uh, it's building, building proc macros, so it works. The Rust analyzer now analyzes the code. And uh, let's wait a little bit. And now my helper spec, you see. Now I have uh, the types and everything, and I can use a uh, space ls, and I can see the code, my, my file navigator. Now I can move around, and I can move around uh, this struct, and I can move to the function main, or I can move to the function run, or I can find a file. And what I can find, I want to find endpoints. And there is a file endpoint. Yes, press enter and now I can see the all references now I can see the all references to this um, to this token let's close it and what else I can do I can see the endpoint 
and I can see the JD and I move to the definition of this endpoint reference and uh, I can use the fuzzy finder and find for example the inline now you can see the all inline functions at least the, the macroses that used to inline the function very convenient and uh, you can press E and now you see the Novium tree and you can move around you can create files or you can close it then you can use the renaming that's also pretty much convenient for example you can rename this one no, I don't want I think that's it for that open and read the configuration it's really helpful oh yeah I forgot to show you this one uh, open the mappings you can see the all very helpful mappings or you can use the basic walkthrough and see the all of these code actions helps you in the fix the code problems you can use grab get status and in the mappings you have everything including the debugging thanks for watching the video is finished and please don't forget to press the thumbs up subscribe and waiting for the any new videos and really thank you who subscribing me watching my videos i really appreciate it and i appreciate all of your comments and i've seen some comments about my previous videos so thank you very much i'm going to do more and i have some ideas how i can maybe show some uh, coding things not only not only showing and presenting but mostly talking and uh, programming and charming some ideas that would be perfect to me working on that part and uh, i want to record one more video about the problems that i encountered using the neo vim and i think it would be really helpful and how i overcome those problems and for most of them i just use the different editor sometimes it happens see you next time bye